Things in life don't always go as planned. 2020 is a testament to that. So when I started this journey back in January, bought this Honda Civic and wanted to go racing, I'd never have expected to wait until August to drive it for the first time. I realised that I'm very lucky to still be able to do this even though I know what's gone on this year in 2020, but it's definitely not how I expected to start the journey. But here we are, Brands Hatch, a few days before my first race at Castle Coombe in the Honda Civic. I've never driven this car before as I sit here in this car ready to go out at Brands Hatch for my first track day. The nerves are definitely going through me at this moment as I get the steering wheel locked off, wave to my dad and I go onto the track. I don't know what to expect and if 2020 has told us anything it's just to enjoy the moments that we do have out and about. So here we are, Brands Hatch, as I mentioned, a few days before my first race and I've just got to get a shakedown in. I've got to get some testing in this car before I drive it at a race event for the first time. So this was an evening track day, only about two hours out on track. I think in total I completed about 50 laps. A lap time about Brands Hatch is about 50, well for me, about 56, 57 seconds in this car. And as I mentioned, I'd never driven this car before I set out onto the track here before. I mean, up and down our driveway a few times, but that's about it. I'd never driven it over <laughs> 10 miles an hour. So there was a lot to learn and just understanding how the car pulls through the corners, how it brakes, what it's like sort of getting close to the limit. I say that because I don't think I got anywhere near the limit in this car around this track day. I look at the lap times that the comparable cars do in this spec series Type R Trophy in the 750 Motor Club. I was about two seconds off, but overall, I think I got my best lap time ever at Brands Hatch on this little test day here, track day, which I was really happy with considering, as I said, never driven this car around this track before. So I was very happy with myself to get that lap time in very early on, but I still realized I was a long way off where this car could get, but for a first little shakedown, first time in this car, was quite happy. And as I drive back to the pit lane here after our test session, as I said, we got a couple of hours out there with some breaks in between, of course, just to cool the car down. I was a little bit emotional because so much had gone into the moment of getting this car to the track. It had taken so long to get to this point through the 2020 circumstances, but also because of all the other things I needed to do, like passing trailer licenses, buying a trailer, all this stuff that I had to do by myself. I wasn't funded by like an outside source. It was all coming out of my bank account. So it sort of hits a bit harder when obviously you've got to do all of the, the payments yourself and you've got to just do it month by month instead of you can just splash it out all at once because that's what some people can obviously do with sponsors. But of course, 2020 means no sponsors for me, unfortunately. But anyway, I was very happy with how it went, the track day. Of course, track day traffic is slightly different to test day traffic, of course. In testing, you can sort of just go in and out and go wherever you want. In track days, you've got to overtake on the left at Brands Hatch, for example, and there are a lot more rules to follow, so you can't generally get the pure pace out of the car, but just getting a little bit of a, a test in, a shakedown, an understanding of the car, it was exactly what I needed and uh, some cool pictures as well that they supplied to us which were quite nice which is actually quite helpful because it was just myself and my dad at the track so obviously my dad was helping me sort of get the car sorted so there was no really time for him to go there and do any sort of filming so it's nice to be able to just fill out and show you what the car looked like out on track obviously still had like, the number plate and stuff on but that was all going to get removed before the race it's also worth mentioning that, of course, all of this went on whilst we're living through this global pandemic, which meant that situations were all quite different to what they were in 2019 and before that. But as I hadn't really experienced that, it was all kind of just part of the learning experience for me. And it was actually maybe in some ways simpler because there was less in terms of pre-race scrutineering and so on. But that was the test at Brands Hatch. And actually a few days before that we were due to go to Castle Coombe in the Honda Civic but we had some problems which is why this is me standing next to a Volkswagen up. So we were supposed to take the Honda to Castle Coombe to get some sort of testing in I guess you'd say at the track that we were gonna drive. We had some problems getting the car onto the trailer and all of that sorted in time. 
it was just all a bit of a rush and it just wasn't worth cutting corners to get the car to the track in some scenario so last ditch attempt we took my first car the Volkswagen up to Castle Coombe and just got some laps in allowed me to just sort of drive the track now I know this looks incredibly slow it's because it is but actually it was a lot of fun I'll tell you what I mean of course I'm getting overtaken by absolutely everything I think an MG comes past me in a minute like I'm just standing still but at the same time I, it gave me some very valuable experience of the track learning more or less where the lefts and rights go and also generally a bit, of, a bit of an idea about where the braking points could be you're looking at the other car, cars obviously for that information as well and it was nice because it was quite quiet because you know it's overcast here a lot of people had left already by the time we'd got there we only had a couple of hours left to actually get some laps in I probably got about 30, 35 laps. Not a huge amount of time out on track, but whilst it looks silly, it was very important experience. And of course I would have rather have taken the Honda there, got experience in the car, I'll actually be racing, but we made the best out of this situation, which unfortunately was presented to us. Unfortunately, we just couldn't get the car and the trail all sorted in time, but nonetheless, there's some experience of Castle Coombe. A few days later at Brands, a few days after that, we're heading to the race. First day with the Civic, we're taking it now to Castle Coombe for the first round, or well, our first round with it. So, quite exciting. Um, a lot to just run through, really. This is still basically a shakedown. We did about, I think, 50 laps of Brands Hatch Indy, um, like half of which were in heavy track day traffic so not too much learned there got a base set up on the car uh, when I bought it so definitely some stuff to to learn today understand where we can tweak the setup there isn't a huge amount of things we can do to this car it's, it's built to a certain specification so we we can't really be modifying too much but a little bit of setup changes here you know it's definitely possible so I'll see how it feels here today so Never driven Castle Coombe with this car. Uh, we did about, how many laps? Maybe like 30, 35 laps with the Volkswagen up. It's a long story, um, but I'll enter some of that footage. Uh, so we've done a little bit of, well, I've done a couple of laps of Castle Coombe, and uh, I, I know where the track goes, but knowing the braking points with this Honda is uh, gonna be a completely different beast, obviously, at much more top end speed, so. Lots to be learned here today, it's still basically a test and sort of a shakedown for this car. Not really going after results or anything, but of course, you know, the lap time's obviously what everyone wants to look at at the end of the day. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting day, Castle Coombe. And then we were there with the car at the track. And due to the restrictions, of course, that we were, were going through, only limited amount of people could be there to support me. So there's myself as the driver. And then we have a friend, Mike, who's come to help with mechanical support. And my dad also there to help with support as well. And John was there sort of helping us getting a bit of filming. But unfortunately, a lot of the areas were closed off. So a lot of the footage is me putting on stickers. I mean, that is pretty entertaining. I know this is probably the wrong technique. Leave your comments, but this, yeah, it's, it wasn't the best. But it looked all right in the end. <laughs> so as you can see I entered the car into the Castle Coombe GT Championship. There are a couple of reasons for doing so even though it isn't ideally suited for this class. The first of which were the regulations which were quite open so one less thing to worry about. The next of which were rolling starts. Now I'd never really launched a car off the start before. All of the other races I've done except from one have been a rolling start so I wanted to try and keep it a little bit more simple and stay with that routine here so rolling starts for the GT Championship were ideal for me and in the future then I can really learn how to launch the car and standing starts won't be so much of an issue but it was just taking one less risk out of it for me really and that's what this was because as I mentioned it's basically a glorified track day this and I wanted to just get some experience with the car around the track now of course I was going up against much faster cars and that was something I was aware of it was actually a good experience as well. Not ideally suited for this championship as this car is right now, but with a few modifications, this car could actually be quite competitive, which I'm looking forward to maybe doing in the future. But 
For this year and 2021, it will stay quite stock and we'll just enjoy it as it is. And then before you know it, it's time for qualifying. So I had some great mechanical support from Mike. Massive thanks to him. He actually wrote me an email at the start of this year just sort of explaining who he is and what he does. And yeah, we've got, got chatting through the emails and then he's here today helping me out at Castle Coombe at my first ever race event. So massive thanks to him. And as I sit here, ready to go out for the qualifying session, loads of incredibly fast cars around me. I was sort of just thinking about the journey up to this point, all the funny little superstitions I'd had going up to the race, making sure just silly little things were in place every single day because I was worried if I didn't do that properly, then something would go wrong. So I don't know, silly superstitions, that's the way of life. I don't know whether anyone else has those, but yeah, they sort of plagued me up until the race event here at Castle Coombe. I just kept getting my head in the twist and yeah, silly little things kept popping up and we got there eventually. We got out on track. As you can see, going past much faster cars as I leave the pits lane. I've got to be cautious here. I've just got to go out there and enjoy it. That's the main thing. Obviously try and not get people's way and learn that's the most important thing as well i guess along with having fun is have fun and learn about the car the track the scenario that we're in and if we come back in the future we have a, a bit of a better idea about how it all goes so i think this was one of my faster laps i'm not 100 percent sure whether it was my exact fastest because i don't have actually sort of data logging in the car with a little lap timer on the dash <laughs> that's about it and obviously the gopros which you can see we're filming from obviously but this lap time was nowhere near where the car could be. But as I mentioned before, the sort of main goals for this weekend were sort of just understanding how a race weekend works because I'd never done one without the assistance of someone else before. I'd always had Marcus when I was racing the Saxo or Sam when I was racing the BMW. I'd always had them as guidance about where I went, what you had to do before, the build up and this was all me learning so it was it was quite I guess I guess scary in some ways all this information I had to take in all these things I had to learn and then the driving sort of in some ways was a little bit down the list of things I had to learn because there are so many other things you have to sort of get into your head before a race meeting for the first time once you've got one under your belt you start to understand it all a little bit more it's not so bad but that first one there's so much information you have to take in and the driving, of course, I know is a long way to go. I pick no bones about that. I'm completely fine with saying I have a lot of experience to, to pick up on in motorsport. And, you know, I've got the right people around me to, to learn that. I've got some great people giving me advice, which is obviously a really important thing. But for me, getting through that first qualifying session was obviously a, a big, big thing. Just getting that one track session under our way, the first competitive track session, I should say, under my belt. I was really happy with now you're seeing here there was actually a red flag right at the end of the session so our session was curtailed by about five minutes i think in the end unfortunately one of the lovely gt cars had uh, gone off the track slightly here and into the barrier on the left hand side unfortunately i think it was day over for him but i don't think he was injured or anything like that as he did turn up to the next event so um yeah, very happy to see that he was all right unfortunately though there was damage to the car but i also had to say a massive thanks to all the other competitors i mean whilst of course i was new to the castle coon world i didn't really have a chance to speak to really many other people but everyone was very friendly that we did come into contact with and you know people out on track as well were respectful they saw the rookie cross they knew that i was a rookie i had a lot to learn and that they treated me fairly out on track and obviously there are a couple of scenarios where i didn't quite get out of the way in time for example you know when the closing speed is a bit bigger than you expect of course that's going to be a scenario you run yourself into a few times but overall I was really happy with just how everyone behaved out on track and it was just a really good experience and everyone was you know being I guess nice to the rookie out on track which is is very helpful so just a few pictures to sort of show off the session here of course I was very nervous going into it as I mentioned, we'd had that time at Brands Hatch to get to know the car, but in reality, we were still lacking experience about what this, this car can actually do. 
but we've got this first competitive session under our belt. The car was all going mechanically well. Mike was happy with everything. We we're just getting a bit of an understanding of tire pressures and so on. But overall, happy with how it went. And almost before I'd had a chance to get over it, it wasn't long until we had to go back into the car for the first race. So there was about a couple of hours in between, but that was mostly spent me sitting down worrying probably. Now, I guess something that took the pressure off for me was that I was the only car in my class in GTs and going into 2021, it's going to be something I change. Um, I, I highly doubt that I'll be doing anything in the GT championship because of course, racing in a class by yourself isn't the most helpful in terms of learning. So I'll be, I think, moving classes and doing other championships in 2021, which is quite exciting. And the pace difference to the next car was obviously quite big as well. So my lap time in qualifying was a 126, I think. So I think I was aiming to get down into the 122s, hopefully at some point during this race weekend. So when I saw a 126 in qualifying, I was a little bit disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. That was quite a bit off what I've been expecting. Yeah, I know it was my first session in the car around this track, but still I was allowed to be disappointed and going to the race, I was determined to try and find some pace there. So that was the main thing for me really in this was just get some speed. You're gonna have some laps by yourself, especially early on before you get in lat. So go out there, try and do a bit better, try and nail those braking points, understand how the car reacts in these situations and just get a better lap time. That was my main thing. I mean, I wasn't racing against anyone. As I said, I was the only person in my class. So of course I was gonna be first. And that, that kind of relaxed my mind a little bit because for some reason in the back of my mind, it's always like, oh, you're competing against this person, you're competing against that one. That was sort of eradicated because I was just in a class by myself and I could just focus on going out there and enjoying it. But in reality, going forward into the next couple of seasons, I need to get that racing experience. So I'm gonna be definitely doing something else. There's the race start. So you can see some really powerful cars in there. You've got GT3 cars, all the way down to my humble Civic at the back there. In reality, my car shouldn't be too much slower than that BMW in front. Well, it's a BMW M3, it's gonna be fast. But nonetheless, I shouldn't be as far off as I was. So that was a little thing in my mind, just try and get a bit closer to that car. So on this first lap of the race, obviously, I'm losing time to these cars in front, but at least I can see them. But that doesn't obviously last for long because of course, as I mentioned, my car is by far the slowest out there. So it was all about me just learning the track lap on lap, how the car reacts in a race situation and trying to get that lap time down as well. Now, this camera isn't angled particularly well, but you can see that I am starting to push it. You can see I'm starting to find the front adhesion, of course, because the car is front wheel drive and We've got some uh, you know, shots of the car out on track, which is nice to see. And I think the main sticking point for me was I was just losing so much time in the straight line. A lot of the other cars were actually not that much faster than me through the corners, which was quite nice to see. I could, I could maintain apex speed quite well, but in terms of a straight line, everything blasted past me. So I think this is my fastest lap of the race here. It's kind of hard to tell. I know for the, sure, in the second race, what my fastest lap was because it was the penultimate lap. But for the this race, I think this was my fastest lap. So you can see I'm starting to push a little bit more. I'm starting to get closer to what the limit might be, but still quite a long way off. I'm starting to push the track a little bit more, use more of it because of course it's all there for a reason. You're trying to take, of course, the quickest way through the corners, which sometimes Sometimes isn't always the shortest way through the corner, but you're trying to keep momentum through the corners. That's the main thing in a car like this, which has about 210 horsepower. The main thing is momentum rather than just going, you know, late on the brakes as much as possible. It's all about keeping that, that average speed up. And I think I did that much better in the race. So as I mentioned in qualifying, my best lap time was a 126, which as I said, was quite disappointed with personally even though I shouldn't be really setting myself any expectations. As I said, it's, it's a glorified uh, track day at the end of the day. But in the race, this lap here, or one of the ones around it, was much better. It was down into the 121s. So I was very, very happy with that. Cut off nearly five seconds off my time between qualifying and the first race. And I've definitely got to be happy with that. Even though, of course, there's still time to be gained there. The cars around me, of course, going much quicker. 
personally, I can be happy with myself with that improvement because that's a nice step up between the qualifying session and the race. And here we are around the final corner. I don't technically take the checkered flag here. You can see someone comes flying past me, my right hand side here. So he took the checkered flag just behind me. So technically I'm still in the race. Technically I've still got a lap to finish, but as he's overtaken me on his cool down lap, unfortunately I, I couldn't really complete the race, quote unquote. So nonetheless, I finished the race. I've got the laps in, saying thank you to the marshals for their efforts. At this event there were no spectators, but I'm just saying a thank you to the marshals for their, their efforts and helping everyone out get through a race weekend. It's always massively appreciated. And then as I roll back through the paddock, once again, quite emotional. We've done it. We've, we've completed a race event in this car. Well, we've completed a race in this car. We've still got one more to go. But we've, we've, got, we've done it. Through all of the, the ups and downs of the last sort of eight months preceding this moment, we've, we've finally done a part of this goal. And I was, I was very relieved. I was happy with the lap times. It, it felt good. And I was just looking forward to in some ways getting a second race done and just saying yes put the full stop there we did it i get out exhausted but happy reflections from that first race then so lap times were much better of course a long way off as i keep saying a long way off what they could be but much better than qualifying i didn't look so far off the pace which was the main thing i felt like i was learning the car which was nice it had a nice little setup on it uh, sort of pretty stock still but a good place to learn from and just generally the car was running quite well and running smoothly which was exactly what we needed built really well from the people that had done so and that meant that I was quite happy going to the second race I felt like we had ticked off a lot of the objectives as I said it was all about just getting some track time in really we had so little experience it was all about really just getting some more time out on track so I was very happy that we had completed a lot of the objectives that we'd set out to do here at Castle Coombe and we'd done so in an environment that was very friendly and also competitive with the other cars around me. I was learning a lot about how to deal with fast cars around me and track day traffic. Well, not track day traffic, track traffic. I was the one getting lapped most of the time. So a little wave there to <laughs> my dad, John and Mike who were just standing there as I pull away. Another wave, I was obviously uh, very intent and waving. <laughs> I don't know why. Nonetheless, I was closing in on that BMW in terms of lap time. Two seconds, I think, was the, the difference. He was in the 119s and I was in the 121s. So I think it was about two and a half seconds, actually, to be fair to him. So I was closer, but definitely not close enough to be able to, to beat him or anything. But I was happy with the progress. That was the main thing. And I was. I was a bit buoyant, I guess, after the, f the first race and seeing that lap time come down so much. To see such a big difference between quality and the first race was, was nice to see. I was actually, as I said, quite disappointed after the first race with myself. And as you see the second race underway, of course, not really keeping up with the cars in front so much. And then just really try my best to sort of explore the limits a little bit more at this stage of the day also. We were getting a bit lower on fuel, so that should have helped with the lap times. And as you can see, I'm just trying my best to deal with the faster cars around me. And I thought I was doing a pretty decent job. I do apologize to a couple of the drivers because I think there was maybe two scenarios where I did get in the way of people a little bit, which is obviously unfortunate. Uh, I guess that I just didn't quite expect the closing speed so much. And obviously that's something I just am learning. But everyone dealt with me with respect which I really appreciate that one was aggressive in trying to get past me and yeah all the people in this championship were really really nice and it was it was a nice little environment to be a part of and of course because of all of the covid restrictions it wasn't really a time and a place to sort of go up to people and start sort of chatting to them about their cars because of course everyone sort of had to stay in a bit of a bubble but everyone was really friendly within this paddock and you know had other people from the other championships saloons formula fords and also the hot hatches everyone was sort of really friendly when you did sort of bump into them out and about so i think this was my fastest lap as i mentioned this was the penultimate lap of the race and something i, I did struggle with a little bit i've got to i've got to say was the blipping on the downshift so 
you want to try and rev match when you're down shifting to try and not stress out the gearbox too much so blipping the throttle so the revs match a little bit more when you go down to a lower gear so I was doing all right with it at Brands Hatch, to be perfectly honest. Um, a little bit annoyed that I couldn't quite get it right at Castle Coombe. It was something that I was trying and qualifying and evidently wasn't really working out because I was just sort of trying to put my my mind through too much, I guess. So I decided to just scrap that for the first race. Just sort of drive as you conventionally drive maybe on the road and not worry so much about that blipping. But it's something I definitely need to do going forward. It, it will Maybe it won't get you extra time out on track that's debatable but it will definitely maintain the car a bit better it will make sure that you don't destroy you know the internals of the gearbox especially so around the final corner i mean once again as i've said many a time this is a lap that definitely can be improved on i'm not sort of showing it saying oh i think this lap's amazing so much is to be improved on as i learn but nonetheless as i let another car go through there we skip ahead to the last corner of the race for me because a similar situation to the first race actually. I come across the line, I get one more lap to go, but unfortunately the leader just laps me here. So that means that I don't manage to complete my last lap. So, oh well, two laps missed out on <laughs> in this race weekend. But at the end of the day, I was happy to complete two races. No issues with the car either, just generally Happy with myself. Nice to see the improvement in the first race, especially. That was really, really a nice positive sign for me. In the second race, just getting through it, I think there was maybe a bit of a, a come down after that first race. The all that sort of stress and anxiety I had building up to it. So then the second race was a little bit more chilled out, but maybe that meant I didn't push quite as hard because the lap time was I think about half a second slower, my fastest lap. Maybe the laps were more consistent, I, I'm not 100 percent sure. But definitely the fastest lap overall wasn't quite as quick so once again rolling back through the paddock here after the second race I'm delivering a little bit of a monologue here you might be able to hear in the background sort of I'm punching there not because it was a good result or anything but just because we've done it we've completed our first race weekend with this car I was really really happy as I mentioned there was so much going through my mind before this first event so just so happy to get it completed and I delivered a bit of a monologue after this second race. It doesn't really make much sense on reflection, but I'll play it. So that's Castle Coombe done. Um, first ever time around here. A very big learning experience. I really enjoyed it, obviously, in a group with a lot of past cars. Um, so maybe that's something I've changed in the future. Who knows? But we'll, uh, we'll see. Um, really great organisation. Marshall was fantastic. And yeah, the Mike, Dad, everyone that came here today, John and Sam and so on for the, the great advice. It's, yeah, it's, it's all feeling a bit more real now that this, this car's finally done a race weekend after sitting on my driveway for about five or six months. So uh, yeah, that's great. Happy to get that one ticked off and uh, yeah, I guess wait till the next one now. But yeah, really good fun. And uh, yeah, hopefully some more tracks within the end of the year as well. So yeah. I think you can probably tell my mind was a bit all over the place after this. I was very very happy to have just completed this objective that we had of just getting through a race weekend uh, by myself i mean we didn't really have too much mechanical support and knowledge from people that have done loads of race weekends mike this was his first race weekend helping out on mechanics for quite a while massive thanks to him of course for spending his time with us and obviously my dad john who came along as well both helping out in support roles and also sam who was always giving me sort of insights and information about what i should be doing through the race weekend but how do I look back on this in reflection? Because it's been a couple of months now. I think we, we came a long way in a very short space of time. As I mentioned, we had the, the lockdown here in the United Kingdom, which put a lot of things on hold for a while. Uh, that meant that I had to go out and do a trailer license quite quickly, get a trailer, all those other little things to get the car out on track, you know, registering the car for the championships and all the maybe the little things you don't really think about when you go racing and obviously all the costs sort of build up much more than you sort of really expect. So just being cautious of that and making sure that I didn't go crazy and make sure that I just everything, did everything in a methodical approach to the first event, which I think all worked out by the looks of it, at least it was a really enjoyable time. Yes, it was stressful because I was going through all these things for the first time that I hadn't experienced before all these things like little you know scrutineering checks you know getting the car all liveried up and making sure it's all perfect for the championship was was just little things which 
they all add up and they get into your mind sometimes and <laughs> well thankfully we got through the race weekend and I'm happy on reflection of course looking at the results wasn't really something I was going to be doing but I'm definitely happy to see the improvement between qualifying and the race one especially very very pleased with myself to see a nice chunk of time gained and as I clamber out the car as we've got it on the trailer here a little quirk of our trailer is that the door won't open fully for whatever reason there's yeah a little guard blocking the way so I have to climb out the window which isn't ideal but it's quite funny watching the, the video so I just thought I'd play that back there and of course the drive back home it's about three and a half hours for us but overall a, a really fantastic day we drove up there sort of 5 a.m in the morning got back at about midnight it was a very long day with all that racing in there as well but something I thoroughly enjoyed and very very just I guess I was very relieved that it all went as I wanted it to at the end of the day and um, of course we all as competitive people want to go faster get better lap times try and you know be ahead of someone <laughs> would be ideal but when I look at the cars I was up against in reality there's maybe one that I could have beaten if I had more experience especially but on this day, it was all about learning. And I think we definitely learned as a group, myself, my dad, Mike, John, we all learned about how to, to prepare maybe slightly differently going forward. All these just little things that will help us going into the future. So you may be wondering what is next? Well, as I'm recording this in October, uh, quite far down the line after we've recorded this, I can tell you that we did enter two more events in 2020. Two more events at Castle Coombe, one in the Saloon Championship and then another one in the GT Championship just because I was already registered I thought I might as well. So that means two videos to come on this channel over the next couple of months so hopefully you'll be there and enjoy those when they go up. Thanks again everyone for watching, hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you soon. <laughs> Goodbye. Actually, one last thing John wanted to mention that the uh, ice creams at Castle Kumar are really good, just so you know. <laughs>